What's up guys and welcome back to Deck Plan. I am a flat earther and I am hysterical. We are going to be responding to my other video I just released and kind of addressing some things that I saw in the comments. The previous video I made I thought was pretty funny but I didn't include like screenshots of sources and I made a joke. I'm sure, I, well I know some of you, there's always a small minority that sees the jokes I make especially that it was revealed to me in a dream joke. I know some of you have seen this meme. The funniest one is I made it up when there's, it's like someone who's like sources and then the response is just like, I made it up. Or like, it was revealed to me in a dream. There's a bunch of variations. It's very funny. But anyways, I just did that because I thought it was funny. And I, I don't know. Providing sources is something that I can do if you guys want me to start doing that from now on. But I read a bunch of stuff before making this video. But some people did not seem to think that because they didn't see screenshots or links. So I'm going to try and clarify some of the stuff I said. And I'll provide the evidence that I used in order to come up with these conclusions. Um... Just to give you a little precursor, this whole thing started with me doing like a little um, thread in a Monstera group asking why people think there's like this or like what people's theories are about the whole V1, V2 Monstera thing. And I learned a lot about everything. There's like Pythium theories. There's um, genetic degradation and just like it's because of TC. There's all kinds of stuff. Um, and we'll start to address that. So that's kind of what made me make the video. There was quite a reaction to it. I mean, I guess I expected some reaction to it because it was a... Uh, I'm kind of like... Uh, giving my opinion, you know, and a lot of it is factual and a lot of people didn't seem to think so because there wasn't links or screenshots. I don't know why that makes any difference, but anyways, let's get to the video. So the per first part of the video was a more comedic intro, just trying to like, I don't know what, just make, make it entertaining. Moved on to what Pythium is. A lot of people seem to think I was like hysterical or just making things up. Um, I talked about how Pythium is a problem throughout the entire world, agricultural nurseries. It's present in like soil everywhere. It's present in your potted plants. It's pretty much everywhere. It was a fungi. It got reclassified. It's kind of a quasi-fungus. It does some interesting stuff. It has spores. Um, it causes root rot. So Pythium is uh, uh, umicote, umicite. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it causes root rot. It infects the roots. It kills the roots, and it slowly moves up into the main stem, and it kills your plants and causes them to wilt. A lot of seedlings and a lot of young plants um, run victim to that. I'm literally repeating everything I said in the first video, but now I have links. So now like some of the people said, I'm dropping facts instead of like being hysterical, I guess, or emotional, or I don't know what people thought I was doing when I was saying that, but whatever. Um, your sources are there. You can read them. I'm literally mirroring what they said. I'm trying to make this in under 15 minutes. So the next thing was the whole like Pythium theory. And I think we can dispel this officially here. I should have been even more clear but uh, I didn't, I don't know why I should have just been more clear. Anyways, um, I brought up TC, uh, tissue culture. There's a lot of protocols that labs use um, to try and guarantee that their plants are disease free. Um, when, let, let's uh, put it this way, there's, mul there's, there's multiple labs making these um, tissue culture tycons. It's very important. So I guess the base theory here, and if I'm misrep misrepresenting it in, in any way right now, um, I don't intend to, but the idea is there was the mother plant. It had a Pythium infection. And then since then, like all Tycons from them, from then on have Pythium inside of them, right? It's, it, it's a parasite inside of all Tycons just like waiting to strike. That's like the whole idea about it. Um, I tried to dispel that by bringing up that there are protocols in TC, but I guess I wasn't specific enough. So I will be a little more specific. So internally, you know, the way Pythium works is it really takes, so this is kind of the first like partial debunk. Uh, in order to get Pythium way up in the vascular system from everything I've read, from all the sources I've read, all the documents, the journals, you really need quite an infection, right? It's got to go, it usually attacks the roots first and from there it works its way up, hits the main stem and then it's in the vascular system of the plant. Once it hits the vascular system, it can spread and it can infect the plant, right? It can be present within plant tissue. However, God gave us this really awesome thing called meristems and these are pretty much the growth points on a lot of plants. It is like plant stem cells and they're really amazing because they're they multiplying really fast. Viruses, they, they really can't handle it in there. I think like something about Metabol the cells metabolize too quickly for viruses. Again, the sources are there. You can read about this. And the amazing part about the meristems is they're not connected to the vascular system. So our pythium cannot, the pythium parasite cannot be present in the meristems, right? It won't be. It can't get in there. It's not connected to the vascular system. So if, like most labs are supposed to, and like most labs do, to get rid of disease and make sure they have good, clean plants, they use the meristems. So 
that pretty much debunks it unless basically we have to have one singular lab that is just constantly using really bad tissue and never using marrow stems and producing all our tycons. That's obviously not the case. There's many labs doing this. I know some of them have to be using the proper protocol because again, these are big investments. It's not cheap to make a ton of plants to fill the market, right? This is this is capitalism. This is making money. People are not investing all this money to produce all these tycons just to lose them because they were lazy and didn't use marrow stems. It, this is a very common practice. There's even guides that many, like I'm, I'm literally going to do this in the future just to prove it to you like any idiot like me, any idiot like me, just a big dummy with a tinfoil hat can literally do this. It's not that crazy. So labs are doing this. So there's this, this whole Pythium theory should be busted, right? And we've already gone over the outside of the plant. It is sterilized really well. There's something called plant, um, not plant preventative mixture, plant preservative mixture. It's a really awesome product. Um, it's using TC and it eliminates everything on the outside as well. If they're not using it, right, if they're not using this special stuff, the pythium is going to kill the plant in the tissue culture flask. So you'll know, you'll have dead plants, you won't have living plants. And um, the spores do actually germinate in sterile environments, right? So they will germinate. There is a, a few journals out there that show that they both don't and do germinate. So after like five to seven days, there's a little chart. They, they always germinate in there. So if you're not using the PPM, you'll have problems. You're gonna have problems and you'll see it and they'll, they'll never make it out of the flask, okay? So they'll be dead. So I think we've pretty much busted that and I'm gonna try and bust it further by buying some Tycons. You can buy tests for Pythium and I will try and um, test the, pi the, the Tycon straight out of the flask and we'll see what happens. That'll be it for a future video. I gotta figure out how to do this financially. It's not super cheap. Anyways, I think we pretty much busted this without being, um, without doing bro science, without being hysterical, flat earther. The sources are there. Labs use marrow stems. They're disease free for the most part. Sure, there's exceptions, but as far as Pythium is concerned, it can't really get in there because the parasite can't get to the marrow stem because it's not connected to the vascular system. So that's done. Another thing I noticed people were like comparing other plants to Tycons. I, I don't know where that came from. Maybe I didn't articulate it well enough. I thought throughout the whole video, I really made it clear that I'm comparing t the V2. That's the reason this V2 is mentioned like a thousand times in the video, V2 to V1, right? And I made that pretty clear towards the end, so maybe people didn't watch the whole video, I'm not sure, and I don't blame you, it was long. But my point was that prone to root rot, in, in regard to V1 and V2, they've always had problems. And I can show you Facebook, we can use some basic research skills on Facebook groups, and Facebook posts, you can see since like 2019, I think, or maybe 2020, there was a huge spike in tons of people getting root rot in their Tycons. It's always been common. It's just a thing I've seen in all my DMs. People DM me about this for years. It's not like I just made this up. It wasn't bro science. It wasn't hysterical. There's been root rot problems with Tycons forever. So the V2 is not like more prone to root rot from what I can tell and from like the evidence that I've seen in the Facebook groups. Like I said, like my theory kind of presented, the problem is if you look at all the previous posts that I kind of scrolled through, they're very big plants, right? So even the very big plants are having problems. The big established cuttings, big established plants are having root rot problems. And I just think with these really small TC plants that are getting shoved on shelves really quickly or sold really fast, they're not very big. People are just having typical problems with like raising small seedlings. I've lost many like uh, um, anthurium seedlings. I know I, I'm not, you know what, forget that. I don't even want to compare it to another plant because people are going to do that and start pulling up sources, talking about completely different things. I don't even want to get into that. I'm just talking about V1, V2. In my opinion, they've been rotting since they've ever existed. So that's just, you could say they are prone to root rot, but again, that's a whole nother topic, which we can cover, I guess, now. So people also had an issue with me um, saying that it's your fault or my fault when a plant dies, right? Like I'm, I'm putting the blame on the human taking care of the plant. That's why it's getting root rot. Because again, this isn't hysterical. These are from our sources. This is scientific, right? This is what everybody wanted is the scientific sources. No bro science, all science, pure science. Um, Pythium, it needs a, a few different conditions. It needs really wet soil, really waterlogged soil, and it needs a, like non-aerated soil. So very wet, like anaerobic situations it can thrive in and it can spread because it sort of like swims around and whatever. And then it also needs like damaged roots so or really young plants. So I guess what I'm saying is if you're having really like big issues with uh, root rot, you might not be providing the proper conditions for these plants. I mean, it's I don't think it's like even a rude thing to say that like you, that we as humans are causing our plants to die. I, I don't, I don't even understand like the negative sentiment. Like, I think it's almost foolish to think that we've got house plants figured out. We're literally taking plants 
from like established places that they've evolved to like thrive in. We're talking jungles and stuff. We're putting them in a basement in Wisconsin in aeroid mix, which is like our pathetic attempt to like replicate nature, which we're like hitting like 2% of it, right? And then when our plant dies, we're just like, must have been the plant's fault, right? Don't, don't that seems like that seems like more foolish to me to like think it's like this plant is just like crap. Yeah, I guess susceptible to root rot. Certain plants are a hell of a lot more, heck of a lot more hardy than other plants. But again, that's apples to oranges and I've been comparing V1 to V2. So the problems have been there since the start. The prices thing, I don't think there's anything to prove on there. I, I don't see how anyone can get that confused. I I mean, I showed you a million examples. Yeah, they are. I showed you other plants, so I'm, I don't even want to compare to other plants. But we have historically seen the Taikan just come down in price lower and lower and lower and lower. And it's going to get lower. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. And maybe it won't. Maybe it stops at $80. And then, I don't know. I, I'm wrong. If it stops, then I'm wrong. I'm not afraid to be wrong. So there, I think that's like fine and dispelled. Uh, another thing that I thought was a little weird is like the V1, V2 thing, you know, um, a lot of this relies on this idea that there's like a single source of Tycons and like the lab that's producing them always like TCs the next generation creating like a worse and a worse copy. You know, I that, that seems like very specific and very weird. And again, that relies on like a one lab theory and that's obviously wrong. There's many labs producing Tycons the other thing is you would almost need like some like Linux package manager, like um, semantic versioning, you know, where you have major revisions, minor revisions. So um, a major revision would be like if you took the second generation and like took a tissue sample from them to create the next generation, minor might be just another one from the original parent plant. Like you can't really track this. So um, this really kind of goes to show that there shouldn't be like this blanket approach to these plants, right? Like um, I guess, I could believe the Pythium problem in isolated situations. I can totally believe that one lab produced like a, a bad batch, right? But the fact that like all 2020 and 2023 batches are just terrible across the entire board, I think that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, there's obviously always like small areas where problems can occur, but that wouldn't be like a widespread problem, right? That seems, I don't know, it just seems a little odd to me. I, I can be wrong about that, but that's really relying on like major problems that happen amongst all labs for it to be a widespread problem. So again, this whole like V2, V1 thing is weird because really no one knows what they have anymore at this point. It'd be really hard to find out. You'd have to contact labs directly and really figure it out. And again, it doesn't really matter because I've seen this rotting since the dawn of time, right? And I showed you with the Facebook stuff, this isn't just bro science. This isn't just um, hysterics. It's, they just been rotting. They rot. They rot easy. That's just what they do. V1s, V2s, they're all the same. I think the only other thing, I guess the real like gotcha would be my, my criticism of like the creme brulee and like this, this variegation thing, obviously the there's desired patterns and everything, but I still think it's a heck of a spectrum and where you can like place yours on that spectrum is like almost hilarious to me. It's so subjective. So I guess you can complain about my opinion about uh, creme brulee. That's fine. Um, I, I'll take that as I'm wrong. That's, that's an easy one. <laughs> All right, lastly, I wanna try and sum this up and we'll be under 15 minutes, I believe. Um, my my biggest takeaway, again, is to read this stuff, look into it, find other sources. It's really easy to portray your side with like screenshots of some scientific journals that are like vaguely related. There's really not a ton of information about Pythium. I have scoured the internet for this stuff. There's not a ton of it out there. And if it is, it's behind paywalls and it's just not that easy. But I do suggest that you guys look into this. You should read it. Um, never take what anyone says on the internet is like truth. I, I could totally be making this up. So please do the due diligence and just read a little bit. Spend a half an hour. It doesn't take very long to read a few papers and it'll really help you take care of your plants better. I, I, I cannot stress this enough. The main takeaway again from this video, just like the last one is do some cool research on this stuff. You'll really start to see holes in random people's mania and theories and, and pr like problems that exist in the community. You'll see these issues and you'll kind of start to see holes with the more research you do. It's really fun, it's really cool, and it's very beneficial. I hope you guys like this video. I hope it cleared things up. And as always, may your plants go strong and healthy. I'll see you next time. Just kidding. That's not it. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm going to try and get into tissue culture and get some like lab equipment and some of my experiments going forward. I want to be like way more exact so I can produce papers. Probably can't get them published, but they might be beneficial if they're really repeatable for you guys. So my new goal with the new experiments going forward is to be like very precise, very repeatable because that is science, right? Linking journals is not science. Like repeatable experiments that you can do at home that's pretty that's that's some scientific stuff so hopefully you guys are looking forward to that i'm gonna try and get some equipment it might take some time but it should be pretty cool 
So yeah, that's another little ad. If you stayed and watched the whole time, you should, uh, good for you. See ya.